Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, the DRF race of the day for Sunday, June the 25th, race number eight at beautiful Belmont Park. We're going three quarters of a mile. It's the $125,000 Dance and Renee stakes for New York bred fillies and mares. Let's take a peek at this field. Please scan or click the QR code for race of the day access on mobile. Your morning line favorite is the number two, Rosa Veloce, two to one. The source was third last time out in the grade three vagrancy, drops into a state bred state. Seems very well spotted, has good speed, but might have to deal with some other pace types in here. Yeah, she does have speed, Dan. I don't, I don't know if she's going to be fast enough to make the lead in here. Um, we'll see if it makes any kind of a difference at all. I have, you know, no argument with her being favored, though. She is dropping out of a way tougher race, and she's got plenty of uh, figures on the go back that make her tough in here. When you click or scan that QR code, remember you get free formulator pass performances on mobile. Let's take a look at the time form U.S. pace projector for the Dance and Renee. Rosa Veloce expected to be close, but the five grannies connection is pure speed. She is on a four way winning streak and she has been very impressive in all those starts. Catch her if you can. Yeah, I think she will make the lead in here, Dan. I don't I don't see why they would try to raid her this time. We'll see if, if the two Rosa Veloce goes after her here. Uh, early and maybe hooks her up. This is a step up in class for Granny's connection, but she's been good so far. A horse that's looking for a little bit of pace, heat up front to rally into late. It's the number one captain's daughter. She's carved out a pretty good career for herself. Six times stakes placed, and she enters the dance in Renee in good form. Here's her most recent start off about a two month layoff and an off turf allowance at Monmouth. She rallies from off the pace to score against those open horses. Uh, she hasn't been able to get to the winner's circle in stakes competition, but if the pace is fast, she can come with a little bit of a kick and maybe spice things up from a single race exotic standpoint yeah exactly that's exactly right i mean she kept closer here I, I actually thought she ran well in here i know it's really close at the end i thought that was a good performance um getting the job done there she can keep close if she has to she's also good from uh from off the pace then they'll probably have to take her back here she's actually hit the board in six stakes races already most of those at really big prices i don't think i'd be shocked if she did it again I still had to lean to make sure she got that photo in the last one. It looked like she was going to blow it in the shadow of the wire. The two is Rasa Veloce, and her buyer speed figures speak from themselves. She earned a 92 and winning the correction, looking pretty good doing that over a sloppy track. She might get a wet track once again on Sunday. Let's watch Rosa Veloce's vagrancy. And this horse, I really couldn't complain about the trip. She got the lead. She was being pushed by some ridiculous long shot that ended up fading to finish last and she has the lead at the 316s she looks comfortable just a better horse is going to run her down in caramel swirl that being said i didn't really love this effort mike and i notice her best races have not come at belmont yeah that's true yeah first of all i just want to say um i don't think speed figures ever speak for themselves uh, so i'm not going to agree with you there even though she's got some <laughs> fast ones um i am with you on that last race though dan that pace actually was not that fast and um, listen, it was better. Carmel Swirl's just way better than her, um, as is the runner-up, Dr. B. She still didn't run that well, I don't think. I know she's dropping here. She makes tons of sense from a lot of different directions, but I've just never been a huge fan, Dan. And if she's the favorite, I'm betting someone else. The number three is Bank on Anna, and she was a stakes winner against New York Reds last year. In her most recent start, they found a pretty salty open second level allowance for her to make her return off of a lengthy layoff. It was a pretty tough spot. She showed brief speed. She tired. I think she gained a lot of fitness from that race, Mike. Now she just needs to jump up from a figure standpoint. Yeah, right. She's going to have to improve upon it. The, the figure that she earned when in that uh, Union Avenue at Saratoga last summer. That was a pretty good performance, and she's going to have to improve upon that if she's going to be competitive here. She did come back in a pretty tough allowance race, Dan. Those one-two finishers are pretty good. That race came back fast, and she might have needed it anyway. The four is Sterling Silver, and this horse is multiple graded stakes placed sprinting. They tried her a little bit longer last time out, a one-turn route in the critical eye for New York Reds. I thought she ran quite well, considering she caught a very sharp drop-down. Classy addition who'd run in a graded stakes race, maybe even a grade one at Churchill Downs in her prior start. And Sterling Silver was very conservatively handled after a slightly awkward break sat last off of a moderate pace, came three wide into the stretch. She tried hard, classy addition, just probably a better horse and had a better trip. Yeah, exactly. This horse, she ran really well in here, I thought, Sterling Silver. She just, she's not going to be able to beat a three to five shot who had the jump on her after, you know, sitting back off of a slow pace, but she ran well there. 
She ran well two starts back when she won. She did have a competitive pace in front of her there. But, man, did she come with a strong finish through the final furlong to close that race down. I, I just like her, Dan. I think she's good. I like her cutting back for this race. She might have a little bit of pace in front of her here from a lot of different directions. She looks like a contender to me. Granny's connection has been very exciting throughout her short career. Five starts, four wins, one second. She's won four in a row, and it's been no doubt about it. Margins. She's won very easily. In this race at Monmouth, it took her three or four strides to get going, but once she did, she blasted off, made an easy early lead, and just makes this group of first-level allowance horses pay. Now she's got to step up in class. The figs say she's competitive, and with her speed, she might be right there in contention, in prime contention when they turn for home. Home. Yeah, listen, if she's if she gets clear on the lead early in this race, um, this field could be in trouble because she's been really good so far. All four of her wins um, that we they look just like the race we just saw, Dan. She she's too fast for those horses. She makes the lead and then she just never gives those fields a chance. Her figures stack up pretty well. Um, this is, however, it's a pretty significant step up in class. I mean, this field came up pretty strong. Betsy Blue's a little bit underrated, the number six. She won a couple of open stakes races, two and three starts back. Last time out on the Broadway, we're going to watch that race going seven-eighths of a mile. This is way back on February the 12th. She just fell pretty far behind in this race. And once she gets to the outside, she is going to come with a decent run to finish second. She's hoping for some pace. She wouldn't mind a wet track. And she's always been a really likable horse. She's been on the board in 20 of 22 starts. Uh, maybe she kind of falls through the cracks from a wagering standpoint. Yeah, I wonder if she does here. She's off of a little bit of a layoff. There are some other interesting horses in here and horses that maybe people would just think have more upside and they'll just go in that direction. And if that might be a mistake, Dan, she's clearly good enough to win this race, um, especially if they go in front of her a little bit. Um, I didn't love her last race, but prior to that, she was in great form. Can't hurry love. The number seven's another kind of underrated horse. She's hit the board in her last six, including this effort. This is an open second level allowance race. There are some pretty good horses in here. Can't hurry love's down towards the inside now. And maybe she's just not comfortable going through along the rail. Maybe she just doesn't have the pace to keep up with these horses. She will alter to the outside and she will get up for third. She runs fine in here. This is that the same race that that bank on Anna was in. Um, and she, yeah, she's just third best in this race. Dan, the one, two finishers, Bill Mott, uh, trained stable mates. They're both pretty good. They both ran really well in there and can hurry love just wasn't good enough to go with those horses. Her prior races are good. I kind of wonder if they're good enough to beat, you know, all of the shorter prices in this race. It, this race just came up pretty tough for a horse like her, I think. Before we get to our top selections, please click on the subscribe button on the daily racing form YouTube channel for the latest DRF videos top pick time for our sunday race of the day it's the dancing renee you're going with the speed granny's connection has been super impressive in her last four races and maybe she'll go off at something like three to one five to two considering she's never run in a stake before that's going to be the key to the race for me dan i just i don't want rosa veloce especially if she's the favorite i just want somebody else i was torn between the the four and the five and so we'll just see how they bet this race they're the same price on the morning line um, if they go off the same price, I guess I'll take the speed, but I like them both. I don't want Rosa Veloce to win. I think she can be a major pace player in here, at least pushing Granny's connection enough that it could set things up for Sterling Silver, who ran so well last time out against the horse that would likely be favored in this race if she was to cut back. And I like her cutting back in distance. Five, four, six, one for Mike, four, two, five, six for me. It's the Sunday race of the day. It's the dancing Renee. Good luck.